so I decided to make a Dark Souls video. This has no script, so you're gonna enjoy just uh, a bunch of rambling. As for the lo-fi beats in the background, I decided I wanted to have music playing for this video, so I looked up no copyright lo-fi, so if you get a copyright strike, I will be pissed. It doesn't matter. So, what this is gonna be is just me retelling my journey through Dark Souls 3, then 2, then 1, because I was in a weird situation where I played them in reverse order, which actually had a payoff in a weird way, because they're self-referential games. They have lore, obviously, from previous games in the newer ones, so going into those old ones and seeing where they took that inspiration from was sick. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so... This is just gonna be a picture gallery, basically, with a bunch of potentially funny or just pretty images, because I like taking screenshots when I play the games. I will do this type of video for Elden Ring on its own, because I took a lot for that game. But, I haven't played Dark Souls in a while due to the RCE stuff, so that one's complete for the most part, and I've already 100%ed all of the Dark Souls games. So I'll get started. Um, this was my first character, and immediately whenever I see this picture, I just think, wow, what a small baby I was. A little new gamer that does not know what they're doing. Uh, namely, using a shield I don't have the stats for. Um, that, that whole Lothric Knight set I have on, I remember grinding for for three hours off of the same Lothric Knights right off of Vort's uh, Vort of the Boreal Valley's boss arena. Man, how useless that grind was, because I was going to switch armor sets in, like, the next area, so. I remember coming up to this bridge, I just thought, damn, this is a pretty fucking game. And it is, because... As you'll see in more screenshots later, I really try to find those views in these games. Even if they look crusty because I didn't have a good computer, I still don't. And so we have this. Also, I know it's viable, but that green herb on my hotbar, never used it. Also, heal aid being there, never used it. Except for, like, really early on. It's really fun to watch or look at these back after having so much more experience. Because I have 300 and something hours in this game now, 360 something. And then also a similar amount in Elden Ring, about 120 in Dark Souls 2, a somewhat less but close ish amount for Dark Souls 1. It's just really fun to see. So, go on to the next one. Ah, I should probably move my mouse off the fucking picture, that was fine. Turning off the HUD. I luckily figured out that feature early, because I like taking pictures that actually look nice instead of having my health bar on the screen. So it's the same one. A little bit closer. I don't know how I got this angle, but I like messing with the camera to try to shape a good frame, because this one's so so much better, because if you can't see my dumbass character not knowing what they're doing, you get to look down and see, oh, that little building down there? I'm pretty sure that's the cathedral. I might be wrong, but it's there, and it was sick to see. And then the mountains in the distance, it's just... It's really pretty. It's on the horizon too, so it sets up for a nice photo. This is the kind of shit I went for, but enough of that. Same, uh, same pictures, uh, or same place I took the picture from. Also, I got that completely wrong. That's the, uh, Undead Settlement right there. Neat. But yeah, lower down is all the shit that you actually get to go to in the game. Of course, Undead Settlement you do get to visit, but... This one, yeah, this one's, uh, I think this is above Fair and Keep. It's, it's really neat to look down and actually notice those things in the game later, because you realize, oh wow, I went there. So 
one of the things I value about Dark Souls the most. Also, this will be rambly as hell and probably incoherent. But that's how I do videos anyways. Next one. Just a slightly tilted angle, but completely different composition, because now the sun's in view. It's really nice to see this kind of just glorious sun in a such a dark world. It's, it's a contrast I'm there for fully, and I love it. Ah, okay. I should explain. There are a few times in these games where I simped for women because, hear me out, I was a freshman in high school. Not even when I started playing, I was actually in middle school, so... Women character, oh boy, to my small gamer heart. No, uh... I actually took this picture because of the dialogue, but I could tell that she was, uh blind, I think? So, I wanted to hear what she would say. Also, if you don't know, this is, I'm pretty sure, Irina. She's the alternative maiden, I guess you could call her. The main miracle merchant of this game. And it looks like uh, my health bar is low, because I just got mauled the fuck out of by rats at the bottom. And I picked up the undead bone shard, as you can see, down with the plus one in the Estus flask. Down in Undead Settlement, because that's where this is. Uh, this character, I really wanted to help succeed, because after dealing with Igon, I believe is her protector, I was kind of not appreciating his jackassery. So I wanted to see her do well, because Igon didn't have hope in her, even though it was his job to protect her. That is Igon of Curry. He's a paladin guy. Also has the Moaning Knight shield in a DLC, but we'll get to that. This, that's not much else to talk about in this one. Other than, why the hell am I using an Uchi Katana whenever my actual favorite kind of swords are great swords? <laughs> but I didn't know that at the time, I was still experimenting. Looks like I had firebombs on my health there too, which are not really that good, but they can be viable. And then more simping, we'll skip over that, but yeah. This. Damn. Love seeing this. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, that's Lothric. Um, this is a perspective taken from the bridge above Farron Keep right before the Stray Demon, and it, you'll see in the next one, I'm pretty sure. Ocean. I thought this view was gorgeous, even with these shitty ass graphics because of my computer, but. Just go back to this one. Having that looming tower with the clouds in the sky really sets the atmosphere for what this game is about. Especially if you played Dark Souls 1 beforehand with the absence of the gods creating an illusion in the sky of a, a sun that's not actually there. That's in uh, Lord Dream. No, no, that's uh, in Orlando. That's what I'm talking about. But. Man, the palette contrasted on my shiny knight armor. It was something to behold for a, a, a wee gamer like myself. Because back then I was not very cultured and I just got into stuff like this. And it had a huge impact on me. And now Dark Souls are my favorite kinds of games. Souls likes, to be exact. And in Fair and Keep, you may notice I have switched my armor. All of those hours farming wasted. But I do love this set. It looks just so sick. Though, I will note, I was kind of a gamer because I was uh, fat rolling the entire fucking game from this point on until I realized that, oh, I need to put the endurance points up to uh, stop that. And eventually I did get it down to medium rolls, but I got used to fat rolls and beat bosses on them. It was a hell of a time. Also, you may notice the, uh, the covenant I'm in on the top left. I... I don't know why I did this. I spent, like, 13 hours just grinding the 30 wolf grass from 
enemies outside of the Abyss Watchers arena because I really wanted the sword that you get from progressing in that cover, uh, which is the Wolf of Farin. I, I don't remember his actual covenant's name, but it's probably like Hunter or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, that was a waste of time because I never even used the sword. But changed out my shield for the one you pick up on the bridge. It's pretty cool. And the Hollow Slayer. That thing is so cool. I just wish that I had played Dark Souls 2 beforehand, because the Hollow Slayer sword is uh, Lucatiel's main weapon before she died in Dark Souls 2, which was depressing as fuck, man. Having to see her go hollow was heartbreaking. That doesn't even happen in this game, but... Damn. Oh yeah, spoilers by the way. Uh, <laughs> also, there might be little mic noises happening at some point in this video. Probably multiple times, honestly. Maybe, perhaps, even every five minutes, because it seems uncontrollable and I don't know how to fix it, sorry. Moving on. Huge time skip. Finally picked up my favorite weapon. Ever in Dark Souls. The Black Knight Sword, which is actually a great sword, because the Black Knight Great Sword is actually an ultra great sword. Very intuitive, I know. I upgraded my flask a lot, as you can see. Still wearing the same armor, thank god. Except I believe. Changed my chest plate. Don't know what that one is. I can't tell just by looking at it. It's probably Gundiers, if I could guess, because I thought that was cool. I didn't take any screenshots between the Farron Keep and the Profaned Capital, but this is a gargoyle with his funny fire hammer torch. That it is a hammer. If you do get the weapon, it is a hammer. But I remember I had been fortunate enough to, on my first playthrough, pay attention to the quests, and I did look up uh, the wiki only to figure out how to make sure I didn't fuck up the quests, because I wanted my first playthrough to be special. So I got to fight Yorm with Sigurd, which I thought was fucking cool. There's me killing him. I don't know why I took a screenshot of this. Wait. Yes, I do. Never mind. Um, I actually had a glitch going on in this part of the game, which will show up next. This. This is a screenshot I was trying to do, because, um... You can see all of these, uh, all of these images overlaid on my screen. This did actually show up in the game. I could not for the life of you tell me why, or tell you, wait, that's, you get what I'm saying. But this would show up every time I swung my sword for a brief period. It stopped shortly after. You can see a nice array of items. They're, they're everywhere. It's, I think it's literally a grid of most items. I would identify them, but it's been too long and I don't really care. But this was a funny little glitch that happened. Ah. So this is later in my run. Don't know why I had this little icon show up. I don't remember turning on or any sort of voice features, but it was there. Switched to the fat boy armor because I was realizing... Oh, I forgot to mention this. At the start of my playthrough, I didn't know what to do with armor because I didn't understand what all the numbers meant. So I just saw poise and thought, hey, that's a stat. What if I just had as much poise as I could? Ironically, in the worst game for it, because poise was really bad. Um, and you can see as well with this, I was a phantom way over leveled, so I got sent down, because this is in uh, the Road of Sacrifice. I was helping my friend Benjamin, my best friend actually, um, who I've known my entire life, and I was trying to help him fight some bosses. So, fat ass me with the snow armor. Still can't get over how they modeled the feet, but. Like, why did they do that? But also, Smo's armor doesn't have that, so it's accurate. 
Uh, you'll see me doing this star pose a lot. I was just trying to help them out with bosses. And now we do it again. This time I was trying to fight for the... Uh, whatever this covenant is, I forgot. I don't think that's Blades of the Dark Moon. It might be, or it could just be the Covenant of the Blue People. Blue Sentinels, that's what they're called. So, there's my host strayed, uh, Patches squatting over my fat ass on the ground, and whoever the hell Kiara was, who was a sun person. I didn't know at the time, but I later grow to just love the Artorias set because of who it represents. Whenever we get to Dark Souls 1, I can explain that story, but god damn, it is good. And this is taken in the Catacombs, where you fight Big Bone Man that has three bracelets that you just break and win. I did actually die to him on my first time through, because I didn't understand the mechanic, and by the time I figured it out, it was way too late, and he had pushed me up against the back of the arena with poison, so... Moving on. This is where I got really sad, because... Man. This is supposed to be a marriage, by the way. In the terms of, uh, Dark Souls. This is Henri, and me in my fat-ass armor, which I wish, I wish I had removed and replaced with something more respectful for a wedding. Uh, or you, uh, fucking stab a bitch in the face, and <laughs> that counts as your wedding. I didn't realize that was going to happen. I thought I was actually just gonna walk in and get married, but... Yeah, that... that sucked. It was really cinematic, though. Or poetic, I should say. a step in a process to get the best ending. I don't regret it though, because if you don't do this, Henri will just go hollow anyways, like everyone else. So, in a way it's like a, a sort of peace. Even though you gotta do that. I don't know if they are I don't know if Henri is dead prior to the wedding ceremony or from the blade. Like maybe she was put unconscious, I don't know. But the there's an assassin in the church back in the Snow City. I don't remember what it's called. It's where Pontiff lives. But if you prevent that assassination attempt, she'll make it to this point. Where if you do some funny shenanigans, you'll eventually have to perform this act. I really regret doing that in Smoke's armor, by the way, and it's very unsightly. For a moment so special. But the the lighting they chose for this was perfect. I'll say that. Seeing the mist go over from an open window on a fog tonight. Damn. It was very impactful at the time, because I didn't... I had no idea this was going to happen, but then it just did. It's still kind of reeling. But... Back to normalcy. Uh, this was me in the process of I think either being summoned or summoning. That's what that flashing means, by the by the way. Over the covenant. Because that little white layer of opacity is not usually there. Um, this is me in Road of Sacrifices again, helping my friend Benj, probably. Uh, oh, right, that's why I had the bell chime. So. I never mentioned it because I forgot it existed, but I used this chime for almost the entirety of the game, maybe actually the entirety, because of the uh, skill that just gave you regen, because I thought, damn, that's sick, I like that. And this is, uh, 
Ah, right. This is an Irithyll of the Boreal Valley, which is uh, also where. Like I was talking about earlier, where the Pontiff lives, it's where you kill that assassin for keeping Henri alive, or for that purpose. But this is Sigurd, my boy. He, uh... He was a pleasure to have around. Just... A jolly man. Always living in his faults. Because I always was the one doing the, the work. So I feel bad for him in a way. He was a a tragic character because he was trying to be the heroic knight that I had proved to be in terms of the story. But he redeemed himself big time with Yorn. So sharing this nice moment of reprise in the slog of the area that was Irithyll because of the fucking fire witches, good God. At least for newcomers. It's not that bad for experienced players, you should fucking run. But, um... This is just peaceful. Also, next screen shot's probably me making a joke. Yeah. So, there is... <laughs> there's this cheeky motherfucker. I believe those are actually the Fire Witch Gauntlets on that character. And the Abyss Watcher set. Other than that. Uh, doing a nice little, uh, emote. In front of the kitchen, saying, woman required a head. Do I agree with that sentiment? No. Did I rate it good still? Yes, because it was fucking funny. It's little moments like that that I enjoy so much from the messaging system. I don't... This was uh, back when I didn't know how to write messages, though. I found out at the very end of the game, so... That was a nice moment after having a little heartwarming sit down with Sigurd and then I just see this so that was great jumping way far into the game uh, this is a beautiful shot it is part of the cutscene so I can't really credit my photographic no, no, uh, photography capabilities but regardless it's stunning Seeing the swirling city just out in the cove. It's it's beautiful. I have no other way to describe it. I don't think I can point out the exact areas that you travel, but right down here, I'm pretty sure, is where that that fucker was summoning the arrow be uh, people. Being annoying. God, that section sucked. But this also looks like the cathedral you fight, um, that one dude, the Spear of the Church. So, could be completely wrong about placement here, but, uh, Doing more work for Blue Sentinels? I'm pretty sure is what that is. Maybe Blades of the Dark Moon? I don't know. So I was trying to use force to gimp people in, um, <laughs> in Orlando, so ignore that. And also you can see I switched to the Havel's armor to maximize points. Also, this calamity effect was due to the, uh, the prisoner's chain from who was it? Champion Gundy. Okay, we're just helping out some hosts, all toasting. A nice sense of camaraderie from this that I thoroughly enjoy. I try to do this all the time whenever I'm a summon. I just like messing around with people. Because whenever you can't talk directly, at least you're not aware of the feature if it is there. All this, these like simple interactions are all you need to have a really nice experience. So I, I just love that about this game. Which I think is also the next one. Oh no, never mind. This is also in the catacombs. God forbid you get stuck in here. So, 
there is a small cave going behind one of those milk, milky ring wearing skeleton bastards with blood infusions, I think, and red eyes. He's, the one I'm thinking about is peering over the edge of a cliff, which faces the bridge that lets you get down to the uh, demon runes, and also, at the very bottom, your boy, Henri's friend, Horus, who is hollow at that point. Um, yeah, this cave is connected directly to that path, and uh, if you jump in the right spot, you will infinitely fall until about, I believe, 20 or 12 seconds have passed, one of those two numbers. Or maybe, maybe 10, even. And uh, that's when FromSoft is like, hey, we should auto-kill the player. Also, wearing the Wolf Knight Greatsword now. I didn't do that for long, I promise. I switched right back <laughs> when I was done. So that grind was somewhat worth it, but not really. Still holding that chime, because I didn't know how to parry at that time. Also didn't know how to use infusions very well, but that's all this was. And then back to my old faithful. Um really wish I was I had the approach I did in Elden Ring and took more screenshots, but a damn shame. This is the end of the game, if you include the DLCs. Because the actual end of the game is Soul of Cinder, we all know that, but this is where you fight Slave Knight Gale, which I thought was so fucking poetic and so cool. Because this motherfucker was one of the last bearers of, like, the dark sign, I think. Right, the last bearers of humanity, basically, because the way you get here in the story is you disturb a princess's slumber that was actually holding back a just reality-distorting event. Or time, really. And it fast-forwards you and the entire world in time so far that the only people left are you and Gale, who's hiding over here in some place, fighting over quite literally a piece of paint. The Dark Soul. Blood of the Dark Soul. It was a, a beautiful fight that I hope I would have taken pictures of, but I don't think I did. But here's one of those just beautiful shots. Um, you can just look at it. This is what the end of the world looked like. It might be desolate, it might be a wasteland, but it still looks like there's a glimpse of hope. With that sun peeking through, even on literally the darkest of days, the world has ended. The only people left is you and the dude who wants to kill you. Gale and the player character wanted to use that piece of paint for basically the same purpose. Give it to the painter. It was hard breaking the news to that nephew of his, who is the painter girl, who wanted the paints, uh, which was blood, to paint a new world. Telling her about Gale being dead because I killed him. Sorry, but at the same time he tried to stab me, so. This actually reminds me of a magic card. Um, Baron Glory. There's only one relatively standing building among ruins and sand. Peeking through the sky is just rays of sun in an otherwise cloudy and fogged world. This is a great background to have, I would say. It's just... It's a beautiful game. Whenever you really stop to look and take it in... Because this is in a cutscene. You don't see this for very long. It's a 
damn shame. So I wish there could be like a Dark Souls movie or some shit, I don't know. But moving on to the actual end of the game, in quotation marks, because it's actually in chronological order before the DLC, at least in my interpretation, it could be wrong. Now that is the dark side. Also, just beautiful. This one, though, I do remember taking outside of a cutscene. I angled the camera up just enough to where my character just ceased being in the frame, and I got this sick shot, which I retook again, to center that sign in the middle of the screen, so that way I could one day use that as background if I wanted to. I didn't end up doing that, but I want to get a tattoo of that, actually, even though it looks like just a fucking eclipse, a solar eclipse. It's damn beautiful, even on the lowest of settings. And this is a right after an, just a monumental fight with the Soul of Cinder, which, if you had played the other games, you would notice all of the neat references that the Soul of Cinder was, referencing past lords' movesets, Kindlers of the Flame. They had pyromancers doing backflips. They had really annoying ass spear wielding cunts. They had sorcerers. Technically miracles as well, in the form of lightning miracles. And the second phase, they even have Gwyn. With the same grab attack, a really nutty combo they can do, and a long ass sword made of fire. It was an epic fight. With the God, the, the theme music as well. Referencing back to Dark Souls 1 with uh, the uh, iconic Plin Plin Plon, or whatever the fuck people call it now. Um, and then distorting that. Because back in Dark Souls 1, the end of the game was a heroic story, despite the dark implications. Whereas here, it feels like a sad end to a tale, long told, over a huge span of time. And that's even reflected in the credits. The music is somber. It's, uh... The singing is still there, but it just feels like a send-off. It doesn't feel like, uh... A congratulations. It feels like a goodbye. And I... I actually almost cried whenever I heard that music. It was... It was beautiful for an end of a game like this. And had I played Dark Souls 1 and 2 prior, I would have been crying for sure. All of this from a funny little game I got for 45 bucks on a Steam sale. With DLCs included. Played with, and I took 120 hours on my first character. I really enjoyed that. Just took it all in. Damn. Shit is crazy. I, I love this game. To the bottom of my heart. I probably would put it above the other two, though I've grown to love them both for different reasons. This is, of course, the actual fight. Um, well, the preface to the fight, because I summoned Londor Paleshade and Yoria of Londor because I did the dark ending, which is also the best one. Because if you're somehow clicking on this video and you don't know what Dark Souls is, first off, sorry for spoiling shit, I'm gonna continue. Uh, but this, the kindling of the flame is an endless abusive cycle to the world. It keeps everyone perpetuated in immortality with drawbacks, the likes of going insane, losing your mind, and their sense of being, other than your most base of habits and rit uh, rituals or instincts. 
And that soul of Cinder is the embodiment of that flame. The first flame. So choosing to usher in an age of darkness, a renaissance of humanity taking over and being what they should have been, feels like the only best way to cap off the game than to offer yourself for the flame, to just let it die, or to take it for yourself. None of those quite add up for me. I think extinguishing it or using it for the future is the best way, which you'll see. This is after I won. Probably had a lot of emotions going on at that point after that fight. You can still see the little golden rays of the regeneration miracle active, uh, or weapon art technically from this thing. Yeah, they called them weapon arts back then. Um, and then this. Oh, an amazing ending. The dark sign turned white, ushering in an age of humanity instead of fire. The, the thematics of that is beautiful. I'm pretty sure this is Yuria? One of them is, I don't know, man. Uh, they look the same, quite literally. Um, but... Even the fade to black paints the picture that humanity is taking place. Because humanity in Dark Souls has always been a dark thing. It was born out of quite literally the abyss. So it, it was amazing to see that. This was my favorite ending so far. In probably any of the games from Sucks Made. Granted, it was my first. Literally my first. But I'd never forget this. The work to get these characters to not fucking die or miss a trigger or some shit was very hard, but well worth it. And that brings us on to the next. This is good old Untended Graves, I think. It's the starting area. I might have gotten the name wrong, but who gives? Just starting anew. Went straight into Journey 2. Did not care to look for anything else. I was like, damn, I want to do it again. Because I am also a completionist fuck that has 100% of these. So I felt almost coerced. By the way, my god, the rings achievement? What were they thinking? I don't need to have to go into plus three just to get some two fucking rings, really? Uh, it's insane requirements, but I did it, so oh well. Then I started to just invade, start doing some, uh, I don't know what the hell I was doing with caressing tears, that's really bad. At least, I didn't know how to use it. Um, I started invading, being summoned, going to PvP parties. Damn, that shit's fun, by the way. I really wish the RCE hack wasn't a thing, because then I can hop back on my character, named after me, Simon, as I have done for every Dark Souls and Souls-like game ever. I always name them at their first character after me, so it feels like a personal journey, where I am that knight. I'm not playing a character, it's me. Well, you can see off in the corner, Guts just <laughs> existing. The cosplay of Guts, which is from Berserk, if you didn't know, which is actually the reason Dark Souls exists. Mostly. Berserk inspired Dark Souls to come into being, and without it, I would be at a loss, because Berserk is now not only the biggest inspiration for one of my favorite game series ever. Probably, no, my favorite game series ever, but also quite literally the piece of literature I cherish more than anything else in life, for now. And I don't think that'll change. I didn't know it then, I didn't know who Guts was, but looking back now, damn that guy's cool. Very, 
glad that that community still shows itself. It, it's it's beautiful in a way. I mean, cosplay characters are not uncommon, but to have one so popularly represented, because I know some people get mad when they see a Guts cosplay because it's so saturated, but I can't help but enjoy it looking back. It's, it's beautiful. Also, I, I completely glossed over it, but I like making formations with people, doing the, <laughs> the spread out emote. As you will see, <laughs> we just kept going. Um, oh, this wasn't the Guts cosplay. My bad. Uh, Guts was someone else. Uh, they are in this thing, though. This is in the woods, because I was summoned for some reason. Defending Ninja. Not Tyler Ninja Blevins. No, just the guy named Ninja. And there's Guts. And the host. And then we surrounded him. We just moved a little bit. There we go. This is the kind of shit I wish people would do more, because it's so fun. And I think shortly after someone betrayed the host... Yep, we killed him. We murdered the fuck out of him. A new player spawned in. Uh, because I believe this guy must have used a... I don't know if it's a taunting tongue or a cracked finger. It's one of those items that lets you get invaded by more people. Because I guess he was either just traveling with guts or... Maybe even doing PvP. I don't know. But he gave us his time to just hang out. And so we beat the shit out of the person that tried to kill him. It's, it's funny. Making friends with the PvP phantoms. It's always fun to do that, though. And it's always fun to be that PvP phantom as well and just be chill. It's like, I don't, I'm not here to kill you, even though that's my job, technically. I'm just here to watch. I love that. This is in Road of Sacrifices, by the way, if it wasn't obvious. Admirable of the host to do a reverential bow. I mean, that's that's an emote from Elden Ring, but this is just a dignified bow, I believe. Uh, and then us two just fucking pointing down on that motherfucker. <laughs> but, um, I think shortly after, I had to just dissipate. We all prayed he was doing <laughs> the squat, the patches squat prayed, group praying session, and then it was over, but, oh, I also like taking pictures, oh, hey, look at that, this is when I figured out that I can infuse things with a blessed to get regen instead of having to carry around a dinky little chime that I'm not gonna use, because I'd rather learn how to parry instead and have more utility, because I wasn't gonna build a faith strength build, I was just gonna build strength, I was pure monkey, and also mostly endurance, actually, because Havel's armor is the heaviest armor in the game, which I did not pick for that reason. I only picked it because it had the most poise, but I grew to love this shit. I actually later sculpted a, a model of Havel really shittily, but it exists, and it is painted. And I will not show it, because it looks like a child made it, and I was, in fact, in high school, so... Uh, this is Firelink Shrine, when, uh... You just load in a little too fast, and it doesn't fully load. And uh, you can just see under the map and through all the terrain and textures. It happens, like twice. You can see here. Um, I believe this is still at Firelink. Yes, this is still at Firelink, as far as I can tell. Um, I don't know why I took screenshots of these, I just thought it was like a rare event, so I was like, ooh, I should take a picture. And I still follow that, because it's like catching a developer for like a mistake that isn't even their fault. It's my fault for having bad hardware, for the most part. But that's it. You get to see under a map, that's cool. And then the phantasmal image of me fading away, because uh, I didn't die, but I think I got a connection error or something. Chilling with my homie Solaire as the host is getting beaten to death, probably, by either a giant or another PvP invader. Didn't know Afro Samurai at the time, but I watched that anime later. 
pretty sick. This is in Earth. Well, no, this is in Orlando, connected to Earthville. Because, for those who don't know, right after the Pontiff uh, Arena is just a semicircle, which is perfect for PvP. I don't know what that symbol means, but I don't know. This is when I was setting up a um, a co-op playthrough with Benj. This is oh god, what a fight! Uh, we're not gonna skip over this. So I don't know why I didn't take a picture of the actual dude that you fight, but this is at Arch Dragon Peak because I believe I missed it the first time through my playthrough, or I might have. I don't know, but. Just the storm brewing. And then you see a big ass dragon bird thing with a lightning wielding, almost Gwyn like character just arrive. It was the definition of epic. And even if you can see the little pixelated lines that the rain was. You don't notice that whenever you're just playing, but it was so cool to be able to stand on clouds and fight a demigod, basically. Because, for those who don't know, the Nameless King is actually the son of Gwyn. Who'd have thought? Actually theorized to be the god of war as well. So, scratch demigod, he's a god. You get to fight a god, and I think that was amazing. Also, really hard boss, which I respect. Um, not the boss I had the most trouble with, though, surprisingly. Which I guess I can cover now, so... Contrary to most people's experiences, I think, uh, Medir was not the hardest boss for me. That one took me about 17 attempts. Which might sound like a lot, or maybe too little, I don't know. But Nameless King took me around 13, and the one that took me the most was actually the Twin Princes, because for the life of me I could not learn their attack patterns well, or predict the, the teleporting. Because, and I don't know why I've waited this long to mention this, I don't play with lock-on at all. I know people think that's just stupid. It's like, hey, you're not using a tool that the game gives you to make it easier on you. But at the same time, I like self-imposed difficulties. And also, there's some nuance to not locking on in PvP because you can direct your sword to where they're going to land. It's really fun as well because it feels like you're more in control of the weapon. It's like... Uh, Driving an auto versus a manual. I like, in real life, driving autos because I don't know how to drive a manual, but it's that sense of control you have over the car. But for me, it's controlling my sword where it goes. Because if I don't lock on, I can do that. So, these bosses were unreasonably hard for that reason, because after testing out what it's like to lock on, fighting Nameless King was a fucking breeze, man. It's crazy how that works. But this was a beautifully cinematic fight. Then I found this little painting in the uh, castle of Lothric. Um, I don't know the lore of this guy. Looked cool, so I took a picture. Moving on. I'm now realizing all of these pictures are scattered on the timeline. A lot of these could have happened in different uh, orders of events. My bad. Um, but I do have this sorted by date modified, so I assume this is in my second playthrough. Because in my first playthrough, I feel horrible for doing it, but I did poison Gale to death with the storyteller staff. Will never forgive myself for that because he's an honorable fight that I wish I had tr uh, treated with the same respect he treated me with by smacking me in the face with a sword. Um, but I rectified that by fighting him properly this time. And goddamn, is this guy cool? 
Then I got to the second ending, because I liked beating all the DLC first, and then I can end the game, because it feel like I was missing out if I didn't do that. I think this is where I... I think I chose to, uh... Yeah, I chose to kill the flame. No more. Because I could not bring myself to steal it from the Firekeeper, because goddamn, that would hurt my soul. Because... Uh, Firekeeper is white, basically. And now this is a good frame. You can see me, uh, this is actually the point in the cutscene where you have the ability to swing your sword, or whatever weapon you're using, to stomp her? Stomp her head in the ground and steal the fire. My god, I could not do that. But you can see the flame fading, the darkness radiating, or the light radiating out, but growing faint. And that. God damn, what a fine line to end that with. I have the voice clip of this, because this, this hit me hard. Especially after seeing the first ending. Because this one feels gloomy. Just outright. Just get rid of the fire. With no hopes of improving. Just the world is going to end. The cycle? Sure, it's over. But what's left? It's not like the darkness ending where you get rid of the fire. But at least you usher in an age of humanity. Age of Darkness, but also Enlightenment, because humans get to just rule, uh, or rule, but here, there's nothing, because getting rid of the fire gets rid of everything if you don't have any, any plans to continue. because I'm close to my monitor. Um, this is, for some reason, the first screenshot I took of fucking the, uh, the DLC in the icy area. Why can I not remember that name? Ashes of Ariandel? That sounds right. Um, I was being a warrior of the sun, a sun boy, because another disgusting requirement of this game is you have to complete every covenant. Who the hell thought that was a good idea? I don't know, but that's what I was doing across my three playthroughs. So this one I just had to help people, so I summoned myself, or I was a summon for Father Arendel and Sister Frida, which is such a fun fight. People say it's one of the hardest ones. I see where they're coming from, but it never really posed me any challenge. But that's probably because of this fucker, this cheeky little sword. But I was also a tank, so that's probably why. I couldn't tell you what's happening on this frame. I just see a bunch of uh, piss ghosts, i.e. me and my two other summon friends. The host is somewhere. And uh, clearly we're being burned by Father Ariandel and his flamethrower attack. That's what it seems like, at least based on the direction of the flames, but then again, this could also be a dispersal. I don't know, I might be being exploded, I couldn't tell you. And then we're all beating the shit out of them. Also, Ornstein armor, based, using the Black Knight Greatsword, which is actually an Ultra Greatsword, also based. And uh, we shredded this poor man alive. And then, we gotta fight Frida, of course. This was in the first phase, it looks like. Weird. Yeah, yeah, that, that's Black Flame Freed. This is the third phase, where we just bullied. Poor Frida with her low poise and minuscule amount of hyper armor. This was a different sum, though. Um, because this guy's just a piss slave night deal, and I'm the only piss ghost, so. Much to say other than the twist in the freed fight with her getting back up covered in black flame damn that's cool also lore you two as in frida and the main character your character um, are 
are the only two Ashen ones in the entirety of the Ashes of Ariandel DLC. Her being the main one of that world because she wasn't there. It's pretty interesting stuff. Ah, and this is the end of me being a summon for someone for Slave Knight Gale. Really proud that I managed to help them win because I didn't do some like cheesy shit. I clearly drank all of my flasks, just went mano a mano with that big man, and I helped someone win. And this is where I learned that, damn, I enjoy being a summon because I can help people. Because some people are not that good. This is beating Frida. Just, I think, no, no, this one we did have another summon friend, I believe, and he just died. I vaguely remember that. But again, just farming sunlight metals. And now this. This was when I discovered that there was an attic in the uh, Ashes of Arendelle DLC. I did not really uh, notice it or pay any attention to it beforehand. So I rectified that in my later playthroughs, this being the second. I, no, no, this is the third now, I believe. It should be, if it's organized by date, which it should be, but I could be wrong. I just thought it'd be a good idea to pray in front of the window. I don't know why. It looks like... Kind of just like a church. How it should be. I don't know. I could have improved this shot, probably. Not being embered would help. But, as you can see with all the flames radiating in my armor, I was embered. So, this is a shot, oh, I was right, uh, back when I was talking about that screenshot from the middle of the cutscene, I was right, this is where that fat fucker stands in some of the torches. Um, getting this shot was extremely difficult, because this is taken outside of a cutscene, and I, what I, I remember what I did for this is I had to go in star pose right behind this wall, right off the edge of the, uh, starting point of the Ring City DLC, angle my camera so far down and close to this wall so that way I just ceased to exist basically, so I could actually get a nice shot. That was very difficult, but I think it turned out well. It has the, the framing of this building just sitting mostly centered, but just off enough to where it covers the sun. There's something about that, I don't know. And of course you can see the... them textures, god damn! Look at that flower that looks like shit. But, uh... I love it anyways. It's cool. And then this is that same spot, but away from the wall. Now you can see how much I tried for this shit, because that's a thin wall really not very high up either. But granted, I think it was farther down the steps. I might have taken it on the staircase. I don't know. This is me just staring off enamored. And for good reason. It's a pretty game. I don't think people give it as much credit as they should. Because it might look somewhat crusty to some people's standards. The crazy maniacs who want uh, super ultra high texture quality 120 FPS. I was playing in 60, sometimes 30 FPS for this game, by the way, and I still love the shit out of it. But then again, my palette just might not be as high culture. I don't know. Regardless, this is in the drag heap, technically, which I'm surprised I didn't take a screenshot of beforehand, but. The drag heap is um, actually prior to the Ring City. I don't know why I didn't take any screenshots, because that place was interesting. This is after the Demon Lord and Demon Prince... No, 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 it's just Demon Prince. Yeah, Demon Prince fight. Um, I guess I was still on my summon grind. Ooh, need 30 medals, by the way, for, I believe, a miracle? Us both resting after a hard fight. 
I think Toast was my go-to emote for this game, which also made sense. Ah, uh, yes. This was an Ashes of Ariandel being summons. Very fun. You can tell this is Ashes because there's ice, which is not in the earth, though, as far as I can remember. More Ashes. I didn't know this reference at the time, but of course that's referencing Snake from Metal Gear. I'm a stupid ass. Ah, this is when I learned how to use Prism Stones, too. If you don't know, prism stones, if you drop them off a ledge, if they break before they reach the ground, that means it's a lethal drop, so don't jump. I had just learned that, but I think the only reason I was actually using this is so I could set up like a... just a bunch of lights on the ground and PvP so people could see that I'm just chilling. I don't know. It was fun. Now, by this point, my build is concrete. I used the blessed cestus. Upgraded to max, of course, for the off chance that I punch someone, which did happen once, oddly enough. Me and an uh, invader, which I don't think I took a picture of, but maybe. We decided to just put aside our weapons and beat the shit out of each other, which was very fun. I enjoyed that. Oh, <laughs> Summoned by the glorious penetrator. <laughs> To fight Ariandel and Freed. Oh god, what a, what a community we have. And this is Medir. I decided to take a screenshot of falling into the arena. Oh, and Black Knight. Classic Dark Souls. For good reason, mind you. Censoring. And IG. Because what could follow is not good but also funny in a way that Knight is not a legal name for your character. But I decided to do a falling attack just to see what would happen as it collided with all the rocks on the way down to the arena. And I get this beautiful blaze of sparks. Very pretty to see, and that's why I took a screenshot. Also, you can see at this point I'd been stockpiling souls. All of these were legally acquired because... There's probably a way to dupe souls in this game. I know there is for Dark Souls 1, because I did it. But, yep. Yeah. Beat the shit out of Medir. One of, I think I was the only surviving phantom. Pretty happy with that. <laughs> oh boy. Um, apparently me and Dicky Discord, wearing the Lotric set, which I didn't know was a Lotric set, until we played Dark Souls 1, which is the Helm of Favor about a warrior blessed by the arms of a god, or, well, the grace of a god, like the, the warmth and the embrace, which is why there's two arms on the armor set. Very cool. But um, we had just fought the uh, warrior armor, is that right? No, dragon slayer armor, that's it. Great fight, by the way. As far as I'd rank fights for the, just the fun factor, dragon slayer armor is definitely near the top for me. So if you haven't fought that boss in a while, go fight him, he's fine. And now is when I started to have to do the PvP covenants, because prior to this point, I didn't know how to do it very well. I still don't do it very well. But, this is when I started to get better. I think I mainly took a picture here because, as you can see here, I'm still, in a game's physics sense, colliding with this ledge, but my feet are not on that ledge. Pretty whack, but it's it's the little things I notice, I guess. Also, uh, can't remember for the life of me what covenant that is. Um, it's not Mound Makers. I'm pretty sure this is for the the respec person. Um, maybe like the Mad Tongues, I don't know, man. It's like one of the PvP covenants, basically. So, I was doing invasions. And, of course, having some PvP parties. And this is just me and the dude expressing friendship in the form of torches. And then you can see these two little wankers using, uh, Tears of Denial. <laughs> really? 
really don't like that spell. I understand why people use it, but it's so annoying to fight against, so I just don't. Which you can tell based off that little orb in their chest. Uh, that prevents them from dying if they were to take a dying blow and sets them to 1 HP instead. You can see how it's really annoying in PvP, which is also why I have these Kukri in my hotbar to finish those people off. Because, oh boy, they were annoying. But we just have this little sense of community. Uh, this was a... This looks like... A summoned warrior of sunlight with a red soapstone. Because you can see the orange tones of the phantom overlaid with the red tones of an invader. Which is also... Looks to be the same for this guy and this guy. But because I was just from a PvP covenant, I looked like just solid red. And that's the host, of course. Unless that was a dude using uh, the ring to disguise himself as a host. Or the ring of humanity. I don't think that was the case. I think that's actually just the host. But this was a great, fun, like, environment. Yeah, the ho that's definitely the host. Look at that janky motherfucker holding. That looks like a target shield in dragon form with some big ass swords on his back. That's hilarious. That's why I love these places. I miss this arena so bad. So it was fun just fighting people for a few hours. Oh, now I'm confused. Okay, that might not be the host, but it probably is because just look at how he's dressed and then this person. Using the, that shield, interesting. Okay. I don't really know what else to say, it's just... Ah! Never mind, I was wrong. These two are both not the host. But then there's the host. The Thy Come Lord. Oh wait, no, no, that's a lie, because it's red text, they're one of these slithos, but... Such beautiful names. This person winding up to just kill the shit out of them. Ah, and I remember I toasted after I killed someone. But, but we'll get, we'll get done with that. This is actually a picture of me. Right after that Pontiff arena in the Aerithil, technically in Orlando trying to get a picture of me. So I used a, um, I think it's a birch twig, birch branch, the thing that lets you disguise yourself into a piece of the environment. I did that. And, uh, got fucky and decided to frame it where I am just blocking some of the moonlight. It was very fun to do that. He's got a nice shot. more PvP shenanigans. I believe I was summoned for this, because if I was invading, I wouldn't do this. Actually, no, I would sometimes, but I needed to get kills for this covenant. And promptly the host just eradicated one of them. Ah, I don't know why that was happening. That's obnoxious. As you can see, so many the gut sword. Guts sword. This is when I had completed the other one, switched to the um, Archdeacon's Covenant thing. I don't remember the name. It's probably accurate. Aldrich Faithfuls. That's what they're called. So I got to this point just chilling with my homie, the other Aldrich Faithful, to kill the host or just watch, which is <laughs> what I ended up doing. I just wanted to chill. As you can tell, I'm a very, um, uh, friendly summon. I had switched to this point to this throwable weapon because it consumes FP instead, which means very convenient. They were casting up miracles to fight. But again, just chilling. Them actually fighting real people while I was just sitting there doing nothing. Finally switched to the Mountain Makers. That's a nasty build right there. I do not like that. Uh, so, the reason I'm pointing that out is because that um, massive great spear, I can't remember what it's actually called, I think it's just a lance actually, has a disgusting weapon art that has a charge that does so much damage. Not fun to fight, but luckily I don't think I fought that. 
I just hung out as a purple boy, which is exclusive to mound makers, by the way. So if you want to be purple, become a mound maker. And also, mound makers are hostile to all players, so you can hit anyone and be hit by anyone. And I thought that was fun and chaotic. Also, you have the hello carving, I believe is what that says. Or maybe thank you. It's probably thank you, actually. Then you have this degenerate using a crossbow. Don't like that, but it's normal. And then Tears of Denial on a Grey Rat Boy and an Artorius Boy. Very respectable. And then <laughs> he goes into Tatch Squad in front. Uh, that was fun. Another Mountain Maker. Chilling. More chilling. And then finally, the ending of my third playthrough of Dark Souls 3 where I decided to kindle the flame using my soul. While it's, it's the ending that most people get, I would say, because it's the easiest one to get, um, if they don't follow the quest lines, they will get this one. It's the most unsatisfactory, because you, you repeat the cycle of immortality via hobbling. It's a very depressing ending, but it makes for a damn good view. And then I finished that character and finally started to do the meme characters. Where I decided to play as, um, I believe this guy was named Coomer, because he is a pale white, middle aged, balding man with a club, and that's it. I mean, this is for regen purposes. Because I think I just wanted a good regen. So yeah, this was the Ooga Booga character. And this is also my co-op playthrough with Bench. Who was named Ooga Booga. And I think just to flex on uh, Lothric and Lorien, I wore the Mimic's head, which, if you didn't know, drains your health every second continuously until you take it off or until it kills you. So yeah, we kind of styled on the murder movies. I don't recall why... Oh, right, we had a somewhat peaceful PvP invader just show up while we were clearly just doing fuck all in the Arch Dragon Peak. Me and Ubabuka. Him being hollow as could be. And me, of course, being a little spirit man. And he joins. Love to see that. Oh, it looks like I... At least in the heavy fusion, thank god. And then we found another Ooga Booga character in the wild. Very excited. And then another naked character. We all just uh, posed on Freed for good reason. Made a missile train. All disrespected um, this fucker. I don't remember his name, but he's annoying. But you can also just bait him off a cliff. And then my favorite picture of Coomer. Um, the one where his skin becomes just a uh, radiant, and I cannot tell what the fuck he is supposed to be. He ascended to godhood in this <laughs> um, Sister Freed fight. Uh, this is... Ah, this is different, different character, as you can see with... Um, for some reason using this, I think this was a... Uh, a uh, quote-unquote speedrun strat because I didn't want to get blessed gem quite yet but I still wanted to get free regen so instead of going to the faith route I or getting a chime I just decided hey let's shoot down that body in undead settlement with a red and white shield on it that's already blessed why not and this was my katana build character being a weeaboo and trying to learn how to pair with katanas which I promptly made a Attractive woman, I, I suppose. More textures ripping. More textures ripping. Both are firing, by the way. Not one. And. What was I doing here? I think I was supposed to be just helping out. Oh. And then. Chilling. Wait a minute, I remember. Okay. Um. This was the, uh. The second 
player I wanted to have a full playthrough with, Fabio, which is not his actual name, but who cares? His name is Landon. So I played through the entire game with him because I just wanted to wanted him to experience the game because I'm very passionate about it, as you can tell. And I believe this is right before the um, Demon King uh, boss fight, and a dude invaded and just was chill. So I'm down with that always. And of course, I was also playing with Bingus, another person named Landon, who I also wanted to help. And then he promptly quit the game, I believe. But we tried. Don't know who this is, because none of them were in the Mountain Makers. I think this was just a dude that showed up and probably chased down and killed my host, because I'm not very good at PvP anymore. By this point, at least, because it had been a while. This is just us, the boys, going through in Orlando, or as the uh, cultured like to call it, Angle Road, taking more pictures. Um, this is a neat picture because of where it's taken. For those who don't know, there is actually an invisible path off of the top of the lift in an Orlando. Invisible bridge leads you to Priscilla, the, uh, the half-breed, which is so sick. So I took a picture on the invisible bridge. Should have turned off my HUD, but I didn't. Um, got my pictures. Uh, pictures, nice pictures of the area. There we go. I learned how to turn off a HUD. Nice. And then I did it again. But damn beautiful. If only the piss ghost wasn't in the picture. Then fighting Yorm with Landon. That was fun. Because, of course, everyone should exempt themselves from any weapon requirements or playthrough styles if they're fighting Yorm. Because it's a gimmick boss. You're meant to use the storm wheel for this. Because it's just fun. You get to do huge amounts of damage in one hit. Also, looks like we had Seagrid helping too. So we were tripling on this poor man. This husk of a former great warrior getting beaten to death by three uh, dudes with swords that are so puny outside of this arena but a damn good fight and I believe this was a somewhat chill invader kind of in Arch Dragon Peak as you can tell by the I believe the only remaining Havel is right there. But I think that's a Havel Knight, because Havel himself died back in Dark Souls 1, so... Annoying to be sure, but I think we did win that. Back to PvP. I was just overseeing. This time I was the host, as you can see by those cracked fingers. That's the name of the item I was trying to think of last time. Um, by this point I had become... Uh, knowledgeable and that power within is good and that the health drain is worth it because that damage is crazy but uh, you can see two cringe mofos using long ranged weapons and one of them second handing a crossbow god I hate those kinds of builds but people play them so oh well oh yeah they actually lived oh no this is a different fight survived the previous fight and continued on to bully this man. Oh, no, never mind, he won. Good job. And then I think I had to fight him and then I died. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, the joys of hosting the PvP arena. Also using Guts' sword. Very cool. Actually, that was a different character then, but still fun. There's someone using Slate Knight Gale's sword. Mad respect. Lucerne, I think is what that is. Also fun. I like that. Even though it's a long range weapon, it's, it's cool. You spin. <laughs> I didn't know I 
realize his name was Schlong. Of course I took a picture of that while slob squatting. God, that's funny. Uh, and Schlong won. Good job, Schlong. And <laughs> then Denny's Kranz. Okay, some people know how to make good name good names for characters. And then me chilling with another dude just becoming old men and spinning in circles. Oh yeah, he, he had done a casting glitch. I don't know what he was doing, but he could just make those uh, like miracle cast symbols show up without decreasing mana, I believe. He would just do that. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, where am I? This is hard. through the map in this one. Nice. This was what I, my character was actually supposed to look like. Not wearing Kirk's set. Hot as fuck. My god. This armor is way more attractive than the Pyromancer's set. Prove me wrong. Don't know why I gave her purple hair. Should have toned that back. This is not a um, <laughs> an edgy teenager or crystal girl. <laughs> from high school. This is supposed to be an adult woman, but oh well. <laughs> it's, it's funny, I guess. Also, that's the last one for uh, Dark Souls 3, so. Where is it? Yes. We will now move on in reversing order to Dark Souls 2. Which has two. This will be a short one, guys. So I'll just draw it out like crazy. Um, 
Actually, no, I'll keep the short and sweet. Dark Souls 2, I'll use this as a general time, not to describe my journey. Well, actually, no. In addition to describing my journey, I will describe my gripes with the game, but also why people shouldn't hate it. As you can probably already tell, I got lucky and got the Black Knight halberd, i.e. best weapon. Almost undisputed. Um, I had again prioritized poise because I was an idiot still, even though I realized weight is uh, usually just directly correlated to poise and defense. I should have been specking for defense instead of poise and accounting for different split types that I would be dealing with, but I didn't care. Um, you can already see with this image, my health bar is cut in half. One thing I hated about Dark Souls 2 is that being hollowed felt like a negative thing, which, I mean, it makes sense lore-wise, but as a gameplay, um, just feature, it was so punishing to the player. Because in Dark Souls 1, if you get cursed, your HP gets cut in half. But in this game, you're just cursed the entire way through. Every time you die, you lose a percentage of your health bar down to 50%. And you have to rekindle your humanity every single time to get your max HP. Whereas in Dark Souls 3, they did it the correct way, in my opinion, whereas instead of penalizing you for dying, which they still technically did, they just didn't make it nearly as immediately impactful or painful to deal with, they instead promoted using humanities to give you a boost to your HP instead of having to just replenish what was already there but missing due to your mistakes, which compounded into one death cutting off some of your HP max, so now you're weaker technically for the next fight, and then you just go on a slippery slope down to at 50% HP and you want to die, and if you don't have any effigies, sucks, man. God, what a bad idea that was. And don't even get me started on ADP. My God. Why did they make adaptability a feature? Sure, you can say, oh, but if you get 20 AP, ADP, it mimics Dark Souls 1's iframes. Shut the fuck up. Why would that ever have been a good idea for a mechanic? <sighs> for those who don't know, ADP was a stat in this game that directly influenced how many iframes you got per roll, independent of the animation. So it was so deceiving to roll in the early game with the timing that I had learned from Dark Souls 3 only to realize I still get hit almost every single time because what part of my dodge roll looks like should give me iframes actually isn't unlocked yet because I had to level up that stat. What a bullshit mechanic. Also, um, I was in the Champion's Covenant, which I just joined at the beginning of the game because I was like, ah, oh, that sounds cool didn't realize that it gave every enemy 50% more damage and HP-ish for the entire game, including bosses. I really screwed myself over with that one, by the way. This is the only game in the Dark Souls series that I had to quit, because I gave up. And then I came back, and that was of course because of um, the, I think it's called Iron Fortress? The one where Smelter Demon lives. What a shit place that is. God. For two months I didn't play the game because of that one area. Because the run up to that boss, if you couldn't make the jump to the water pond uh, that, cleanse, that gives you fire resistance, and then just go straight to the boss, you had to make it through a wave and you know, just a bunch of ninjas basically, or Alon Knights is what they're called, um, wielding black blade katanas, or black steel katanas, with way too much range, way too much damage if you join this stupid ass covenant, granted the reward's pretty funny, um, for beating the covenant, which requires a ton of NPC invasions, I forgot to mention that, this covenant makes it to where it completely changes 
the game in the way that not only stats wise, but also you get invaded in almost every area by an NPC. And some of them are really hard. So, big mistake. If you start out this game, don't pick this up. Unless you really want a challenge, because you will get a challenge. Um, but this was in, uh, what's that place called? The Woods? Undead Woods? Huntsman's Cops, that's what it's called. This was here. Moving on. Fighting, that looks like Arlo Dennis, I believe. In, of course, Iron Keep. That's what it's called, it's called Iron Keep. Fuck this place, by the way. Um, don't know what I was doing with this shield. That was not smart. Um, but this is the last image of Dark Souls 2, unfortunately. Uh, oops. That's kind of depressing. But, I'll use this time to explain why Dark Souls 2 is great. Despite its flaws and its punishing mechanics, and strange game design choices and how getting to this area, which is clearly, at least in the appearance, on top of a mountain? By going up of an elevator from the previous area straight up into the sky to somehow be in hell doesn't make any sense. It's not like Dark Souls 1 where it has an intuitive interconnected map that's beautifully crafted, which there's a reason for that, which is because um, they added so many shortcuts because they didn't want to give the players teleportation too quick in the form of, um, uh, what are they called? The Lord Vessel. Whereas in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, it was always there. Lord Ve uh, not Lord Vessel, but the ability to teleport. So that's why Dark Souls 1 is so well crafted in that sense. And the world is so fluent and non-linear. Though it does get more linear after you get Lord Vessel because you can teleport. Yada yada anyways. Despite that, this game is still a great game. The stories, the areas, some of the boss fights, are really cool. And hell, Fencer Sh uh, not Fencer Sharon, god fuck her. Um, Lucatil, such a cool character, a tragic one, but a really cool character, and Aldia was super interesting to hear at the end of the game, who was the scholar of the first sin, a big tree motherfucker that interrupts a lot of your bonfire rests after the major lords, which in this game gave you bequeathed lord shards? Which are basically just Lord Souls, so same thing. But the highlight for me for this game was all that, and also the PvP. Like some may say, Dark Souls 2 is the best for PvP, and they're kinda right. Because this one's the most in-depth so far, at least in Dark Souls. So, out of three uh, games, this one's the best for PvP, which is true. Because there's no weapon arts back then, thank god. There were some unique animations, of course. There was uh, power stancing, a really cool mechanic that I never used because I didn't know how to do it. Which is kind of dumb. I should have just learned how to do it. But I ended up becoming a Havel monster in this game, too. So, yeah. You can hate me if you want, but Havel monster is a fun thing to play as. Just beating the shit out of people with clubs, but doing PvP in the top of this area in the Soul Tower. Not Soul as in S O U L, but S O L as in the Sun. Was so fun. Because you just fight people. I don't remember why I was doing it. Probably for a covenant. Um, almost definitely for a covenant because I 100% of this game as well. God, what a painful experience that was. Um, surprised this is the only. This can't be the I guess it is. Four Dark Souls 2. I know I had more screenshots, but I don't know where they are. But, uh... Oh shit. That's not one. Uh, moving on to Dark Souls 1. Coming to the end now of this probably long video. I don't know. 
Joker. Um, this was the one I played last in the trilogy. I had high hopes, and I was not disappointed. Coming into Lordran, I was, um... Oh, I remember. I had made myself fight the Abyss Demon. No, Asylum Demon, not Abyss Demon. I fought the Asylum Demon for about 20 minutes with the Broken Straight Sword, just so I could get the hammer, and I never used it. What an experience that was. All to just pick up a broadsword and use it for a while, and then eventually, of course, you get the Black Knight Sword and use it for the entire game. But, this is your boy Solaire. This is my first time actually meeting him in-game, because I had played the games in reverse order, despite knowing who Solaire was. Very weird feeling, but very worth it. And of course you just see him staring into the sun, just boiling his eyes, so I decided to join him. And there's becoming an egg. Uh, I, I got really lucky with this drop, by the way. I got this way too early. A really insanely powerful weapon to get any Black Knight drop early in the game. It will carry you. If you upgrade it. And are good at the game. So basically it will not carry you, it's just a strong weapon. But this is how you get back to the Northern Dead Asylum. Uh, this is such a cool appearance. I'm so glad I knew what this was. Vaguely, to take a, uh, a screenshot of it and knew that it was special. So I forget the name of these things. They're not. I don't think they're wanderers. Vagrants. They're called vagrants. Um, these only spawn whenever another player in a nearby, as in Wi-Fi connection type or an internet connection type thing world has died with a lot of souls, a significant amount, and um, it's a chance, it's a, it's a rare chance to spawn, but this enemy will spawn on the corpse of that player, and just casually, won't even give you any text, it will just invade your world if you spawn in at the right time, on a right cycle, on a right seed, which is hidden to the player, but it's very cool that it exists. And if you don't kill it, it'll actually get passed to the next world. And these vagrants grow in power the more worlds they survive if the player doesn't kill them. Granted, I killed mine because I was like, oh, that's so cool, I want to kill it. <laughs> like a video gamer would probably react. And they can turn into these red versions. They're like little crabby things with an egg and some stocks, as you can see. But they'll turn into a dark phantom version, like a red phantom, which is, a, a, I believe, a dark vagrant, or an evil vagrant, but this is so cool to see, because these are rare, you don't see these often. But, then again, I say that, but I took multiple screenshots of these creatures, because I got really fucking lucky on my first playthrough, and I found more than a few. I actually found, I think, exactly three, maybe two, we'll see. I took screenshots. But this is in the, uh, the, what's it called, the church right above Fire Lake, connected to, um, the town that you have to walk through to get here, and you have to fight gargoyles, the bell tower gargoyles, I mean. And it's right connected to Andre on the right. I can't for the life of me tell you where this is because I don't remember. I think it's on that parish maybe? Probably. I just found this dude. Really low level, as you can probably tell, because I'm wearing a grass dress shield I stole from Darker Garden and then just or Darker Basin and then just ran the fuck out of it. Oh, 
frog, I think. They're very confusing creatures. They actually have a unique uh, animation cycle for when they're drenched in water, which is, is only possible if you lure one to a very specific spot as well, where they swim by gliding onto that water. Very, very niche knowledge that almost no players would actually find out. It's so cool to me. Then I took a picture of the cursed bodies of other players, because if you didn't know, if you died to curse in any FromSoft game that I can think of, maybe not Bloodborne. I think Elden Ring still does it, but if you die to curse, it'll leave these fragmented crystalline bodies from, this is usually from basilisks that do this, because this is in the sewers. I believe, where if they breathe their death cloud on you and you get the buildup of the status effect called death, or curse really, this happens, and these uh, these spawn exactly in the same animation, uh, pose, and location of the player death, and then they transport them to other players' worlds to make it feel like it adds to that storytelling that other people have died here. Be careful. I think that's sick. God, I love Dark Souls. Um, please do a close-up of one. You can see the vaguely humanoid form, the legs, the head, the arms, and all the protruding spikes that do happen every time you get uh, cursed. Then, huge jump. Found another curse because there's another basilisk. This time, it took on the texture of that area, which is covered in roots and plants, because this is in the tree going down to Ash Lake, where for some reason there are basilisks. Don't know why. As you can see, my blade is bloodied from killing them, because I don't like them. Basilisks are annoying. Vagrant number two, as I was saying would happen. I don't know how I got so lucky to find so many vagrants, because this is very rare. You don't get this often. Especially in the minuscule amount of playtime this character was at. By this point, I only had 12 hours in the game, which is crazy to me. But I found two vagrants in that time. This is at the bottom of the tree, going to Ash Lake-ish. There it is, close up. Oh god. Uh, PTSD flashbacks, my god. So to ever ask someone, what's the worst boss from Dark Souls 1? I would be shocked if they didn't say the Bed of Chaos. Cause this is what this boss is. What a shit boss. They trick you into sense of false security and like, fun. By making you go down the slide, they go into a tree and like, oh boy, this will be fun. No, it's the most cancerous garbage boss you could fight. Cause it's not a good boss at all. Because it's in a way a gimmick boss, you have to go break two seals on the left and right to unlock the path to fight and kill this tiny little bug piloting this giant flame and root mech, basically. Not that it's not an actual mech, but it's just a, a mass that swings its arms at you wildly, sweeping across the entire arena, by the way and knocking you into pits, because as it moves its arms across the arena, all of those cracked bricks, as you can see there, start to fall in sections, of course, but... God, what a bad, bad boss design. Um, skipping way ahead, I had become a Havel monster by this point. And I thought it'd be awesome to take a picture of the humanities, the spirits floating in the abyss, because this is in the DLC, which I thought was beautiful. I really hope I get a picture of fucking... Oh, yep, third Vagrant, by the way. One character, mind you. Just one. There we go. Uh, I should probably talk more about this, actually. Um, this is in the Abyss. In the... Um, I guess it's just... Is it called the Artorias DLC? I don't know. I bought the remastered edition, so I don't know the name of the DLC itself, but... Yeah, there's only one DLC. 
which reminds me, I completely forgot to talk about DLCs in Dark Souls 2, which were actually all really good. Except for the gank boss fight in the the sunken temple area, the, the drowned king. God, fuck that fight. It's literally just three really chunky NPC characters fighting you in a tunnel. Sucks. Moving on, back to the actual topic. This is right before the Manus fight, who's the father of the Abyss, the origin of mankind, and is theorized to be the third of Pygmy and the start of the game, uh, the cutscene of Dark Souls 1, which was just beautiful, and also a very hard boss, with a nice, a nice gimmick. It wasn't like a gimmicky boss, but it was like a nice, uh, a nice cool mechanic that you could interact with, which is where you had to find the silver pendant, which is only revealed by shining light on a specific ass wall in FromSoft style. And that pendant, whenever you used it, would reflect dark beads sent at you, which Manus was using all the time because he used dark magic. Um, what a cool area, though. It's just pitch black, covered in souls of humans, literally, just wandering. They don't even have an attack animation, they just walk at you, and being in the colliding hitbox of one of these fuckers just damages you. God, it was such a cool place. And there's the, there's the fog wall for Manus down there. Just chilling. Then we get back to, um, damn, what's this guy's name again? I swear, I know this game. Um, this is outside of the Artorias Arena, where um, this renowned archer, Goth, that's his name, I believe, I'm pretty sure, Go? Goth? I don't know. It's like Van Gogh, sort of, but um, a giant archer instead of an artist. But he's also an artist, because he carves those uh, little howling stones that you can breathe into as a player or toss on the ground in this game is how they did it. Um, but saying messages. It's pretty cool. And if you talk to him, he picks up his art, his uh, bow. He's blind, by the way. Um, and shoots the fuck out of a dragon called Black Dragon Calamine, which I promptly killed, because if you go into this guy's arena prior to getting uh, Go to shoot him for you, he will fly, be almost untouchable, unless you're a speedrunner and you know how to abuse the shit out of magic, which I don't. Um, and he'll basically just burn you to death. But this way, you clip his wing using Ghost's help, and you can just fight him only. Black Dragon Calamite was a cool fight, but it didn't really strike me that much as Manus did. Oh my god, I never took a screenshot of fucking Artorias. Jesus, that's not okay. Uh, this is the closest thing in location to Artorias, I'll use this. The arena that Artorias is part of... Actually, hold up, I, I need to know. Please tell me I took a screenshot of Artorias. Nope, okay, that's depressing. Real sad about that. I'll just use this one. Artorias, which I should have had a screenshot of, um, is about a tale of a knight sent to defend the abyss by Gwyn himself, I believe. He's one of Gwyn's, like, fabled knights, guard. And, uh, this DLC, Artorias of the Abyss, I think is what actually it's called, is set in the past, and to get there you have to go to the past. But in the present day climate of Dark Souls, everyone remembers Artorias as the one who defeated the Abyss, or at least kept it back. When in actuality, whenever you get to this arena and you walk in and see Artorias, he's been fully corrupted by the Abyss almost to the very core, but he still fights abyss creatures in his most maddened state, 
almost just entirely corrupted. You can see the abyss pouring out of him in purple and dark splotches of slime, almost a sludge. His arms broken from when he fought Manus with his companion, uh, Sif, the Great Wolf, the Great Grey Wolf. Um, and he only has one hand to wield the sword properly. So you get to fight that broken hero that went down in history of Dark Souls as a savior of the Age of Fire, basically. When, in actuality, and you only realize this after you have fought him, whenever you kill Artorias in this timeline, Manus is still well and alive, and the Abyss is still spreading like crazy, because Artorias failed. And that's when you realize, well, you're the one that has to go down to the Abyss and fight Manus yourself. And you only realize this from talking to the Elizabeth Mushroom, which is in the Sanctuary Guardian, or Garden, that you were the Knight Artorias. You were that legendary hero that saved the Age of Fire. set is directly derived from Berserk, and Guts is moveset in the Berserker armor. Just wanted to say that. It's very cool. Um, moving on. I had to get the game by that point, because I had always followed my philosophy of DLC first, then actually beating the game. So, I had summoned Artur, uh, Solaire for this, as you can see, not from the description here that would show some phantoms, but instead this uh, ghost holding his shield and sword. <laughs> and uh, I know there's a, th a stigma with summoning. I do this summon because I wanted to just experience the end of the game with the sun bro. The sun bro. So I did. And then I chose what I think is the best ending. Instead of falling towards the canonical or canonical ending of continuing the cycle because the other two games couldn't exist without it, I walked away and let the flame burn out and became the Dark Lord. As you can see with all of the serpents praising. A very cool moment. Souls 3 sought to rectify all of it, but they only ever capitalized on its success because it was highly demanded, but this is how the original artist intended for the game to end, as opposed to the kindling, which is also an ending you can do, which I then sought to do on the second playthrough, as you can see here, going through the game again, yada yada yada, doing summons with my boy because I needed to complete his covenant, because for some reason in every Dark Souls game you need to do like at least two playthroughs, usually three, to get all of the chains. What a painful thing. Oh my god. Um, this is a catacomb, so bone zone. Beat quit again. Offered myself to the fire. It creates a beautiful cinematic that culminates in a huge flame 
God, that hurts my eyes. That's almost the last picture. Where you keep the blazing cycle on. Forcing everyone to stay undying, immortal beings. Until the end of time. Until you, the chosen undead, get absorbed into the fire yourself by the next guy that comes to kill you along. And then the cursed one in Dark Souls 2 yet again continues sort of the same thing. Because they did a throne in that game instead, which is weird and disconnected, sort of, but kind of. It's strange. And then finally the Ashen One puts a proper end to it all. And the best canonical ending I could think of. By painting a new world, which is heavily theorized to be Bloodborne, by the way. Very cool. Um, within a painted world in itself, which I thought was awesome. Um, and you take the flame and usher in an age of dark where humanity can finally rise over the gods. Because the, the whole thing with the fire is that it was born from the age of gods and dragons. So... All of them ended up being false idols, basically, uh, people abusing their power, and humanity was always shunned as the darkness. So, being able to stop that and take control for once, take the reins of the world as humans, is one of the best things that think story-wise could have happened for this. It was such a cool ending in Dark Souls 3. This isn't what this is. This just leads to that. But, man, what a journey. I probably got more hasty towards the end because it's getting late and I kind of want to sleep. But, yeah, that was, that was Dark Souls. I think... and try to experience the joy I did. Because Dark Souls is an amazing series. For me, it was actually therapeutic in a way. Being able to fight dragons and demons that I could imagine as my current struggles in life. That I had the power to take them down do it if I tried hard enough, which sometimes isn't the case in your life. So, I think I'll leave it on that note. Um, I would hope whoever the hell watches this enjoys it. Um, I don't care what feedback I do get, I will do this again for Elden Ring. And that one, oh boy, that one will take a while, because this uh, collective screenshots going off of my memory, which is probably wrong, uh, is about 150 uh, images. I, I became a real photographer for Elden Ring. There's like almost 800 screenshots for that one, so uh, that one will have to be 